Chapter 2. Voting on a name for our class frog. Name ideas. Kermit, five votes. Harold, four votes. Petunia, five votes. Froggy, four votes. Mr. Frog, five votes. Mrs. Frogarina, four votes. Ranita, Spanish word for little frog, four votes. Jeremiah, the bullfrog, one vote. Kermit versus Petunia versus Mr. Frog. Kermit, 12 votes. Mr. Frog, 10 votes. Petunia, 10 votes. Introducing Kermit. Emily, <clears throat> status, thinking. Dear Hope, I told Aviva and Kaylee that we should all write to Miss Graham letters to ask her to let us be in the same group. I was way too scared to go straight up to Miss Graham and talk to her about it especially after she shut me down in class. But I thought maybe if Aviva and Kaylee and I all wrote her, she'd listen. Aviva smiled and nodded at first, but then after Kaylee said, can't you take a hint? She already told you no. Aviva stopped nodding. Well, I'm going to write one anyway. Kaylee and Aviva are acting strange. I'm not sure what's up. They've been wearing their rainbow bracelets all week, but never gave me one. And I just noticed they had matching ankle bracelets today, too. Love and luck, Emily. Dear Ms. Graham, I know you said no changing groups. I promise I'm not trying to argue. I want you to know that Aviva, Kaylee, and I have been best friends since second grade. Mum says it's hard to have a group of three because someone can be left out. But it's not normally like that for us. Only now they're laughing at jokes I don't understand and dressing like twins and eating their lunches really fast before I even sit down. This is our last year together. Kaylee's parents are putting her in a private middle school, so she'll be leaving the rest of us. That's why this year is extra important. This will all be better if you put me in their group. Please? From Emily. Aviva. Date, September 8th. Kaylee says we have to let Emily make new friends, that it's for her own good. This hurts my heart, but she's probably right. Kaylee only, or Emily only hangs out with us, and we only hang out with her, so it usually works out okay. But I just found out that Ima and Abba, that's what I call my parents, are sending me to Love and Tana prep next year for middle school. Say what? I thought I'd stay in public school. Kaylee's going to Love and Tana too. Her parents reserved a spot there when she was in kindergarten. My parents signed me up last week, before they talked to me about it, by the way. Ima and Ava said they'd heard horror stories about public middle school. Horror stories? What exactly does that mean? When I asked, all I got was bullies and cigarettes. So middle school has bullies? Big whoop! Bullies are everywhere. I'll survive. And do my parents seriously think I'd try a cigarette? I may not be a genius, but I'm not a complete idiot either. I like my teeth white and my lungs pink, thank you very much. No matter how much I argued that I'd be fine in public middle school, they couldn't hear me. I told them that La Ventana is all girls, and probably all rich girls. I won't fit in at all. But then they said it's the only non-Christian-based private school in the county. We're Jewish, and public middle school is not on the table. So it's La Ventana or back to homeschooling. Yikes! They hugged me and told me they just want what's best for me. They are so strict, and they think they know best all the time. This is exactly why I don't share my thoughts. It's like I'm yelling underwater and all I'm getting is wet. After a while, I stopped arguing and sat there, deflated like a balloon. P.S. I'm worried about the frog. I did some research last night and found out that wild frogs have difficulty surviving in captivity. The trick is to make sure you know the type of species so you can have the right habitat. I printed out the article, but I don't want Ms. Graham to think I'm trying to tell her what to do. Maybe I'll just set the article on her desk at recess. Sharon, I work alone, mostly. Sure, I sit in a table group. Sure, we talk, but they all think I'm weird. It's okay, I am weird. I don't have three eyes or purple polka dots, but there's something about me that's different. And sometimes different means strange. Mum says it's because I don't care about what other people think, but she's wrong. I do care about what people think. I find it fascinating, but I don't care to change me in order to make them like me. Kaylee. Dear Ms. Graham, 
Emily's going to write you a letter asking you to switch her group. No offense to Emily, but we don't want to be in her group. Emily will need to find new friends before middle school, since Aviva and I are both going to La Ventana Prep next year. She's way too dependent on us. If we keep hanging out with her, she'll never branch out. It's for her own good. There's no way Emily's mum could afford to send her to La Ventana. Emily's smart enough, but they only give full school scholarships to geniuses. Poor Emily. Her dad took off to explore faraway places like Lebanon and Armenia, and her mum paints for a living, for real, and practically makes no money. Sucks to be Emily. P.S. No offense, Ms. Graham, but it's kind of a waste of time for us to be researching types of frogs. A frog is a frog is a frog. Who cares what kind it is? It's gross no matter what. Emily. Status. Sad. Dear Hope, Ms. Graham called me up to her desk to talk today. I got that, oh no, I'm in trouble feeling. My throat tightened up right away. I couldn't meet her eyes, so I stared at her dangly earrings. She thanked me for my letter, but said it was important to keep the seats consistent. Right away, I felt tears pushing at the bridge of my nose. I hadn't cried in school since third grade, and I sure didn't want to break my record. Ms. Graham started to say something else, but I just needed to get out of there because those tears were about to burst free. After lunch, I found this note on my desk. Dear Emily, we spoke briefly today, but I wanted to add a few thoughts. Please know that I admire it when students stand up for themselves. I understand your reasons for wanting to switch groups. However, let's give our seating arrangement a chance. If you're still concerned about this issue in a few months, we can always take it to a class vote. Let's wait until after Thanksgiving and see how you feel then. In life, the most challenging experiences are also the most rewarding. I encourage you to stick it out. Spread your wings and try something different. This is how we grow. I want to tell you that your letter sparked an idea. Mailboxes. We'll all make mailboxes for our desk, myself included, and send each other letters throughout this year. Thanks for helping me think outside the box. Sincerely, Ms. Graham. P.S. Talk to Sharon. She has lots to say. I wanted to rip her letter into shreds. Doesn't she know she's ruining my life? Henry. Scene. Students mill about the room and work on a babyish project, making mailboxes out of wrapping paper covered shoeboxes. Kai. Can I swap with someone? The only wrapping paper we had at home has floating babies and rattles. Henry. I have silver. You want silver? Kai. Thank you. You saved my life. Henry. My power is surprise even me. Aviva, did you see that Ms. Graham is wrapping her box in froggy-covered wrapping paper? I wonder if she had that at home or if she bought it just for this. Kaylee, who cares? Wrapping paper and letter writing are both killing trees. It's entirely ungreen and global warming-ish. Henry, that's not a word. Kaylee, you knew what I meant. Blake, this is a trick to make us write more. Henry, all theatrical. Curses! The scoundrel's trying to force us to learn! I'm onto her sneaky plan! Aviva, softly. It is kind of fun, though. It might be fun to write letters, too. Henry, no way. You sounded like Minnie Mouse just then. Aviva turns red. Henry, maybe you should do voiceover work in cartoons. I have an auntie who does that. She's got a high-pitched voice, too. Aviva, uh, okay. Kaylee, is everything a joke to you? Henry, yeah, pretty much. Haven't we been over this before? It's called wit. Kaylee, yeah, maybe dimwit. Blake, I think you're funny. Henry, see, someone who appreciates my humor. Cecilia, hola abuelita. Today I put stickers all over my journal and added some to my mailbox. I don't want anyone to mistake my journal for theirs. I'm sharing my heart with you abuelita, but I don't want anyone from my class reading my private thoughts. Ms. Graham promises she's not reading our journals either. Don't worry, I remember what you said. I know to be careful about sharing our situation. Ms. Graham is funny. She puts all these sticky notes around her desk to remind her to do things. Some of them are practical, like pick up dog food after work or prep for Tuesday's lesson. Those practical sticky notes disappear and then new ones appear each day. But she also has silly sticky notes that just stay stuck day after day, like breathe or be here now or being in the now. What do you think, abuelita? If she can't remember to breathe, she might have a bigger problem than a hungry dog. If I wrote myself a still silly reminder sticky note like Ms. Graham's, it would be relax. No one needs to remind me to breathe. I've got that one down. Guess what? I'm starting to like Kermit. 
Remember how I used to get all creeped out by lizards? Kermit's a whole different story. I stop by his habitat slash tank every morning and say, Hola, Ranita. I swear, he stares right at me and says, Grow up, grow up. Looks like I've got a new friend, Abuelita. Words to practice. Stickers. Calcomanias. Besos y abrosos, Cecilia. Blake. Wasting class time 101. So they're making the boxes. He's tossing the box. It's much better if you just look at this. Uh, oh, <clears throat> it looks like it attracted the attention of the teacher. So now he has to actually do the work. Ooh, but look, there's a letter for him. Hmm. Sharon. I slipped a note in Blake Benson's mailbox. All it said was, have a nice day. Because he doesn't fit in either. He tries to, but it's like he's mixed up, being cool with being bad, and thinks one equals the other. Blake feeds the frog fresh, crunchy crickets and hangs out by the habitat. Maybe he's watching, worried. Kermit won't recover from her injuries. Or maybe it's just another way Blake can avoid the mean kids. He cares that he doesn't fit. I see it in the way his shoulders hunch and his mouth curves down. He notices the way the others scramble and scoot to the middle of the lunch benches so that there is no room for him. I invite him over to my table in the corner, but it doesn't make his shoulders straighten out. It's easier to be like me and not care. Why does everyone assume that the frog is a boy? 